now. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Vanessa Grelay. I'm the president of the Blockchain for Social Impact Coalition. Um, for those who um, don't know this, we have been running this online incubator uh, now for three years. We're really excited this year um, to focus on uh, climate change and Earth Day, partnering with Earth Day uh, for the announcement. So very important also for the judges. And um, I'm going to take you through a deck uh, really to include every information um, that mentors and judges need to know at this stage. We'll have some special sessions also for the judges um, in about two weeks uh, that is specific to the judging criteria and uh, the, the process, which is all online. So um, if there are no questions at this stage, I'm going to share my screen and um, just kick it off. And don't hesitate to put questions in the chat. Um, who else do we have from the BSIC um, coalition here? Uh, we have Tessie uh, Moraine, um, who has been involved with us for three years. We have Higgin Klein, um, who is helping us with our sponsors and uh, participants. Um, and you have the deck in your, um, in your uh, chat. All right. Um, so to, in today's calls, we're going to call, we're going to cover a few things. The first one is registration and communication. The second one is present challenge, um, how we manage the weekly checkpoints with the participants, and then going through a little bit of the judging criteria and winner announcements. So uh, for the registration and communication, um, really important also for the mentors and the judges. This year, we're partnering with a platform called Gitcoin. And um, every interaction that you will have with the participants should be uh, done through this platform. So um, you need to register on the Gitcoin BSAC incubator page. Um, and I'll, I'll just open it uh, for everyone to see. Um, so when you click, um, you need to have a GitHub account in order to participate in uh, the hacking. Um, so you just uh, sign up. Oh, this is not the right page. Um, you just sign up for the Gitcoin uh, page. And then you'll see once you're in all the, um, the three prizes with all the details. There is also something called the Gitcoin chat, which we'll uh, get into. Uh, where you'll be able to um, sort of share the information with uh, all the uh, participants. So once you have your GitHub account, you sign up to Gitcoin and uh, you make sure that you're in the Gitcoin chat. Um, if there is any um, information that you need in the, that you can't find on this chat, please email us at the BSACcoalition.com. Uh, um, what happens is that all documents and submissions um, are stored in a GitHub repository for each team and the judges and the mentors should be able to have access to it um, uh, through uh, the Gitcoin chat. Um, so one question is, sorry, is this a repetition of the previous presentation? Yes, it is. We, we put two different time slots for judges and mentors because we have people from all over the world who are joining. So this, this uh, time was more convenient with some people who are in different time zones. So if you've already um, sort of participated in the, the previous um, presentation, feel free to um, save yourself one more hour of time. So um, this week, the teams are uh, have signed up on Gitcoin. They are... Um, looking at the various challenges and then they are forming teams. So this this week is really dedicated to that and they have to sign up through the team formation form. So as a mentor, once we have the teams that are signed up, we'll, uh, depending on your specialty and, the, and your background, we'll assign you some teams. Um, we also have um, some specific uh, weekly office hours for the mentors to participate in. 
Um, this is an opportunity uh, for you to work and answer questions from participants um, on, on the phone. Um, usually everything goes through the chat or you're able to establish uh, with the teams you're assigned to a specific you know, cadence of interaction. But this is uh, an opportunity for everyone to come together on a call if needed. Um, we have a, a general presentation again today uh, for the Gitcoin community, uh, Friday at 2 p.m. Um, you can add directly this uh, on your calendar if you want to participate. We had previous general information sessions, which we recorded, one for the mentors and one for everyone. And then uh, the weekly office hours on our Tuesday at 12 p.m. EST and Thursdays at 6 p.m. Uh, EST. Um, sorry, and uh, what we'll do is, um, since some people are in um, Eastern time zones and in Europe, uh, we'll try to create a, a special um, time in the morning um, so that everyone can join. So um, just a few details on the Gitcoin chat. The way we um, organized it is um, there are various chats where participants are contributing. The general one is really where you can ask general questions. As a mentor, I recommend that you monitor it um, you know, whenever you're available. Um, if you're assigned to a specific, um, a specific challenge, we have a chat per challenge. So plastics and pollution, sustainable cities, uh, carbon footprint. And then uh, we also have a chat where the teams are connecting with each other um, to create their team. So it's the find the team uh, chat. And um, if you're interested in, you know, you know, people who are particularly interested in one team, you might want to monitor that chat too. Then we have the BSAC tech questions and the BSAC biz question, biz, business questions. Those are general chats uh, where uh, participants can ask specific questions. And I think, you know, I'll be monitoring this chat, but um, if you're a mentor, I think it's good that you are able to look at this chat, you know, um, once a day or once every two days, if in case you, you want to answer some of the, the questions. So in terms of mentorship, your responsibility is to be signed up to all these uh, chats. There's the link directly uh, in the presentation. Um, and uh, if there are specific questions assigned to you, um, we said that we would answer questions by end of day each day. Um, so, you know, it's not a very heavy lift on the mentor side, but you just need to be present in the, on, the, on the chats at least once a day. Um, we are going to be sharing, uh, apologies for the, the background noise, we're going to be sharing a lot of back, uh, developer resources and also sponsor resources. Um, so you have here a lot of technical resources for the teams. Uh, we'll also be sharing resources um, around impact and um, sort of the, the climate uh, subject. If you have any uh, resources that you think are relevant to share, please send them to us or share them directly in the chats. Uh, but if you send them to us, we'll be able to add this to the, um, to the general uh, resources links so that everyone um, has the same information. We have additional sponsors who are coming in, uh, the first of which is Cello. Um, and I don't know if everyone is familiar with Cello, but um, they're also going to be sharing some uh, resources on how to build on Cello. Uh, we have UNDP, um, who is our partner and has a lot of subject matter expertise. Um, and we have KPMG, um, who also will be dedicating some resources there. So expect these resources to grow um, and not only be developer resources, but also um, uh, more uh, resources related to climate and carbon and plastics so that people also can are able to frame the issues that they're solving for um, in an informed manner. Um, any questions at this stage? I don't see any specific questions in the chat. Um, so moving on to prizes and challenges, 
Um, so the information that we are currently giving to um, the participants is more public information on the SDGs. So the, the way the prizes and challenges are framed is very broad. So you should be able, um, the participants should be able to capture um, a wide variety of uh, projects under sustainable cities, plastics and pollutions, and carbon. I'm sure all our judges and mentors are very well versed into those subjects. Um, but if you look at the SDG goals and targets pages, which we put a link into, you obviously have a lot of information about, oh, and I'm sorry, the link is taking a little bit of time um, to load up, but um, on the UNDP page, you have a lot of information and background on, you know, what exactly are those goals, uh, what facts and figures are sort of the underlying assumptions that people use for those goals. And most importantly, um, we have the goal targets um, and not the live on the line TV. Um, the goals and targets, which really give a lot of um, detailed information on what uh, it covers. And for example, if we look at this uh, sustainable cities uh, SDG, we see that it's very broad, right? So safe and affordable housing, accessible and sustainable transport, uh, sustainable uh, urbanization uh, capacity for participate in integrated sustainable human settlement, um, natural heritage, clean water, um, and the environmental impact of cities. So when there's, there has been a few questions from the, um, uh, from the participants, whether their projects fit into the, uh, into the, uh, the challenges. And I think, you know, um, as a mentor, you need to guide them um, through these through three challenges and the scope of them. And um, it's quite unlikely that um, their projects doesn't fit under one of them. If you have any questions around this, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself, Tegan, um, York uh, about this, and uh, we'll make a determination. We wanna make sure that uh, the participants are able to submit um, projects that um, are, can qualify for uh, the prizes. Um, any questions at this stage? No, I don't see any questions in the chat. All right. Um, so um, then I want to take you through uh, the weekly checkpoints. What's really, uh, I would say, different about the way we structure um, the BSIC incubator is that we want this to be a uh, a six week program where uh, the teams have time to really think about the problem they're solving for, really looking at the business issues and the scoping of their projects before they start building. And the result of that is that you have very mature and well thought uh, outputs from this process. And your role as a mentor is really to guide them through this process and really help them stay on track of what they're supposed to do each week because it's really a methodology, a proven methodology that helps them um, build better solutions. And as a result, a lot of the projects that came out of the incubator are still live today. Um, teams that have formed internationally and, um, and that are still working together. So uh, on week one, um, and it's, it's currently live right now, teams are forming, uh, getting acquainted with the challenges and trying to choose very which specific challenge they're, they're gonna be working on. And in that context, they need to define the specific problem they're addressing, um, whether blockchain uh, is really needed to solve this project, um, the definition of their market, um, if there are any existing competing solutions that are uh, currently work working on this and understanding the social, um, cultural and economic factors uh, that are uh, to be considered on the ground in order to really scope out their solution. So by the end of this week, uh, next week, uh, this week, sorry, on Tuesday, um, 
we're going to be receiving the team formation forms and um, they're going to need to be setting up a, a github repo, repo where they're going to be putting all their um, their documents and then um, having well thought out the scoping of the problem so um, next week you'll be assigned some specific teams and you'll be starting to engage on these issues um, on week two it's really all about um, the pain points and the user story and um, having them determining answering a specific uh, types of questions so who are your clients who are the users of the solution what pain points are you solving for them what is the product value proposition um, how are you going to distribute the product and what are the risks or unintended consequences associated with the solution? This is this stage is all about human centered design, really understanding the issues. Um, if you know mentors can share specific experience that they have on the ground, uh, the more the better. And um, the team's uh, deliverable or the end week deliverable is really the user persona, the pain points, and the user story. Um, and it doesn't have to be a, you know, a 15 page presentation, but um, as a mentor, you wanna make sure that they have a document where they capture uh, most of the questions. And that should be in, the, in their team uh, GitHub repo. Um, week three and four are all about the build. Um, uh, prototyping their solutions in some manner. Um, and that's important because that's gonna be part of uh, what they're gonna be judged on. Uh, defining the minimum uh, viable product testing approach. So not only having a prototype, but understanding what are the next steps after this uh, prototype. So by the end of week four, um, by mid-March, um, you're gonna have to be you know, helping the teams or at least uh, keeping them on track about delivering those um, two documents, um, the prototype proof of contact and a document defining the MVP uh, testing approach. Um, and, you know, some teams work very well in urgency, some, work, some teams work well, you know, in doing step by step. Um, we think the step-by-step -step approach is um, the most produ productive. I personally only work on, you know, urgency, um, so I know uh, that it's it's going to be something that, as a mentor, you're going to have to help the the, the teams with. Um, on week five, um, we're helping the teams uh, really uh, pitch their deck, pitch their project. Um, for this specific, um, this specific incubator, um, the content and the form is as important. So the way that the teams are going to be able to work together and deliver their pitch is uh, something that is valued by the judges in the judging criteria. It's very important that we see that the teams are working well together, that they're able to um, articulate very clearly and crisply um, what their solution is. And for that, um, we help them prepare their pitch deck and video presentation. And we have a few items that need to be in the presentation. So the presentation should not be more than 11 or 12 slides uh, and must include the vision and value, all the bullet points that you see here the vision and value, the problem the team is solving, the target market and the opportunity the solution, the revenue model, the competitive analysis, um, et cetera. And um, you know, by end of week five, you should have a first draft of the, of the deck, which is um, complete, and that can be refined in week uh, six. Um, and then on week six, it's the final uh, submission on March 31st. And um, there's actually three components um, of this submission. Um, it's the video demo, the pitch deck, and the all the documents that need to be uploaded in the GitHub repo. So um, in addition to the pitch deck, we want people to film um, their pitch 
So um, a few things, they're gonna go through the deck and then if they have the demo of their product, that's gonna be included in the video demo. Um, and it's really important that all submissions are due uh, by March 31st, uh, end of day uh, EST time. Um, any questions about this and how to help the teams in that context? Um, let me see the questions on the chat, if there are any. Oh, I can see it. I can't see any new questions. Um, hi, Vanessa. It's Melissa from Berlin. Hi, Melissa. Hi, how are you doing? Um, I just had a quick question about um, the weeks and to help sort of prep some of the mentors that are new to this um, year, if you've got any learnings um, from previous um, years for each of the weeks or maybe some of the winner submissions to have an idea of like format um, or, you know, feedback from uh, mentors or students in the past. Sure. Um, so we have two people that I'm going to let speak and then I can add uh, to it. But I think we have Tessie and... Um, yeah, I can speak to that. Um, and so, uh, Ravi. Yeah. Thank and, you. and Sophie as well. Um, okay. So um, in terms of like uh, the most successful mentor relationships to the teams, uh, were the ones which were obviously the best fit. Often it's also um, just practical reasons, you know, time zones, availability and really staying in touch. Um, that's in terms of like um, successful relationships and the mentor can have several um, teams mentoring either throughout the entire process um, or on a particular topic. Like if you're more, more likely, if you are a uh, mentor on a domain subject, it's really important to be there early and, and help a lot of teams versus somebody who's uh, on, on business or presentation um, that's probably something that's going more throughout. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, sure. That's decent. I can always ask you offsite as well. Yeah. Yeah, also, I, I mean, the, the best thing is, uh, uh, Melissa, when you ask all these questions, uh, also in, as they come up in the, in the um, chat, so that everybody else can also uh, benefit from the answers. And we monitor the, the chat rooms, and so um, we can always... Uh, adjust everything there as well. Yeah, I think some, um, some, okay, great. some mentors are uh, more comfortable, you know, by call and some, more, some are more comfortable by chat, uh, depending on their background. So I think whatever makes you successful and, and really listening also to the needs of the teams is super important. If um, you think a, a team is struggling, please contact us. Um, it's possible that, you know, the way we uh, match people at the beginning um, may not be an ideal fit. So expect that, um, you know, the team you start with may not be the team you end with. Um, so that's, that's also something we want to be flexible on uh, because it's important that we respond to the needs of the teams. Um, Ravi, Sophie, um, would you like to share any, anything else? No, I think uh, that th those were helpful comments. Uh, what we could do maybe um, on the mentor chat is we'll share some of the results or, or just outlines and elements and characteristics of uh, what occurred in the previous hackathons, just uh, to sh showcase examples, bearing in mind that the, the deliverables are very specific and may be different in this particular uh, incarnation here. So, but I, I think just to give an idea of what good looks like, uh, both in terms of mentor relationships and then in terms of how the teams are progressing week on week, uh, that could be helpful. Yeah, definitely. That would be really helpful. Thank you. Um, it's Susan here. And I think just building on that question, I think what would be extremely helpful is success and failure principles in general, knowing that the teams are going to have different kind of uh, approaches. But it seemed to me, and I, you know, I'm not sure if this is right, but the, when I look at what happened last year, the, the teams had really focused and didn't get too expansive in what they were trying to do, I think seemed to do better um, than, than people who were trying to solve every problem in a very yes. big way. That's, that's, that's accurate. So you know, things like that, that we can guide them and say, look, don't bite off more than you can choose. Stay very focused on solving a particular problem and do it well. 
as opposed to try and solve like a whole bunch of stuff with a broad based platform that can be this and can be that. So we can give them a little bit of um, focus guidance would be helpful. It, it, exactly. And I think uh, sometimes at least one thing I've found helpful is helping them think about, well, what's coming the following week and the week after. So being able to think ahead uh, in terms of the what's ahead of them. Uh, I think there's sometimes been a tendency where uh, teams have been very focused on the immediate deliverable. So uh, that is something uh, that we'll also include in terms of our guidelines along with kind of uh, success and failure principles as you outlined. Right. And then really uh, look at the, the weeklies because the weeklies do have everything that in the end leads to the, the overall judging criteria. So from a judging perspective, uh, we were intentional about putting all all of this, these different steps into the weeklies and, and guide you through the process. So, so um, you know, to, to be with your team and um, if you're a mentor and um, review the, the weeklies with them and make sure that they have this uh, covered, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, hi, it's Robert uh, from Switzerland here. Uh, okay. Thanks for the presentation. So, in fact, I uh, asked questions in the chat. But yeah, I, I wanted to address the, the questions um, from Robert. Um, for week two, um, do we require that the teams will perform an interview with uh, businesses? Uh, yes, they should. However, um, some teams don't have yet access to, you know, businesses in that uh, capacity. If you're able to help them, um, that's great. Um, if they want to create some assumptions uh, based on existing, you know, published information, that is fine. We will also want to be realistic about that. But if they can perform interviews, that would be fantastic. And then from yeah. a judging point of view, which we're going to talk after this, right? Um, so anything that's mentioned in the weeklies, um, if they can't do it for whichever reason, um, at least they should think about what that would have been let's say in this example like the, yes we couldn't we couldn't interview the the businesses or we couldn't interview the beneficiaries right but um you got to mention that you still have to capture that because then yes. the judges also know okay this was a consideration it wasn't just forgotten right and then what was the workaround i mean it's really about problem solving and and getting through the process understanding why certain things are important right so it's important to not just like not do it, but really like, okay, we couldn't do this, but we did something else instead of it. Sure, yeah, I mean, that's, that's like the whole feedback. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, like following up on that, I would suggest that uh, maybe we should provide some template of how this interview, I mean, how the team can um, write down um, the feedback from the interview, yes? Yeah? So what's the, what are the learnings? So, what, I mean, usually we expect the learnings and some action points. Yeah. Okay, so what what does it what what's in it to me to to the business to my project and to to the customers great thank you robert and then um you asked any restrictions for the code work license could you um expand on that um right so the teams are yeah, working and contributing some work um like uh, is the hackathon or, uh, or do we require that the whole work is like, really accessible, like permissionless, uh, copy left, or you know, there are multiple licenses both on the code. So and, we have, and, uh, in general, um, all, all projects are based on Ethereum um, or forks of Ethereum. And so depending on you know, what the teams want to build on, um, there could be, but in general, whether it's public or permissioned, um, Ethereum uh, no, no, clients. It's, really about, it's about really about the license. So, for example, yes, uh, do we require like MIT that, license or, or what type? For of example, license? yes, for mm -hmm. for creative work, we have this creative licenses or you know, Mozilla licenses. Um, everything belongs to the teams, right? Um, mm -hmm. So they can structure it however they want. Okay, and, so it can uh, be proprietary, they, right? Yeah, and when they have. Um, when we're going to set up the team uh, uh, groups, um, they will have the option to be public, available to all the other participants, or have a private chat, depending on how they want to do it. And I also wanted to suggest, um, Robert, what you just said um, with giving teams like 
more guidance around, for example, the interview process, the human-centered design process. Um, anybody, any of the mentors or judges for that matter, if you want to teach uh, anything, we can also make time available that you say like, I, I'm giving a particular hour on, on the, let's say the human center design um, interview process and, and, you know, anybody who wants to join can, can join. Yeah, and we'll record it and share it with the group. And that should be done where? On the Slack? I mean, on that- you Let us know to... and then and then we give you um, a Zoom account access and then you can give the session and then we distribute it after make it available. So yeah. that, okay. that should all be very fluid. As things yeah. come up, if some somebody sees an opportunity to teach, um, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Take initiative. You, you can mm -hmm. share it in, we're gonna, so the, the to-dos that we have coming out of this call is making sure that we have a mentor only chat where mentors can also, you know, share <laughs> issues um, or as you said Robert things that they want to share or record for the participants uh, and then you can always email us as bsiccoalition at gmail.com okay. put it in the chat just in case um, and okay. uh, the so, other gonna... outcome uh, that we have is that we're going to create a document uh, with learnings that we can share with all the mentors Correct, but you will uh, initially you will share it by email, or or we should subscribe to some special mm -hmm. channel on the um, Git chat. We're gonna have a special okay. channel. Okay. So yeah. you know, some people are more active on the channels than others. Mm -hmm. um, if you have any specific questions for um, the incubator itself, um, you can always email. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would only like to suggest like so to make it clear, you know, what's uh, what's the license of the work and so on, so the teams know that. They can include some proprietary work if they if they need or not, and so on. Yeah, that okay. Their work doesn't necessarily have to be open source. Yes, correct. I mean, I'm, I'm not about to suggest anything if it's good or not. It's just as a matter of fact. Yes, to to make that clarity. And if you want to share any information about this, because I'm sure um, other teams might be either interested in it or not even aware of the differences in the types of licenses, then um, just share it. Right. That would great. be great. All of that kind of information is appreciated. Okay, but so far you don't have any requirements, yes, for that. So the teams the teams are free to choose. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, and that brings us to um, sort of Tessie, uh, yeah, <laughs> and the judging criteria and and deadlines. And Tessie, do you want to take them through um, some of the judging criteria? This is very important as a mentor because you have to keep this top of mind when you're guiding the teams. Hey, so, hey uh, Vanessa York's here. Uh, oh, hey York. Uh, oh, I apologize. I couldn't break away from a call that I was on. Apologize. Do you wanna do you wanna go through these criteria with Tessie? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, Tessie. Let me know if you, you need a, an assist on voice. Oh, yeah, we can, we can echo each other. Um, yeah, so basically, um, as we talked about the weeklies, the weeklies are leading to the overall uh, judging criteria that we have. Um, I, there are also judges on the call, so I'm just going to show the criteria quickly and how this is going to work, right? So basically, there are the different, um, this is an, uh, a judge, judge sheet, and um, so there are different categories, um, impact opportunity, business model validation, technical architecture and impact measurement. And so um, these are the different uh, categories. And then we also capture whether or not the teams uh, delivered weekly and um, you know had their video. We do consider if people have issues with um, producing high quality video or anything, because in some areas that's just not available, the same as in the US, we saw big differences there. But uh, basically um, we made it very easy for the judges to be able to go through and, and select the various um, uh, points and then uh, this will all derive at a score there's a different weighting to everything so we have um, not only um, so it's process uh, related it's assumption validation um, and uh, making sure that the the process uh, has been stuck to in a way that the intended impact actually can 
uh, be validated. Mm -hmm. For example, one of the criteria would be whether uh, beneficiaries were included in that. And then um, general product viability and roadmap as well as business plan and then uh, the final presentation. Um, in the deck, we, we talk about uh, some of the details here. You can look through those. Uh, the judging period is uh, the first two weeks of April, and then we're shooting for like um, an announcement of the winners um, on Earth Day. Yes. Yeah, so um, the way it's structured is for the announcement is that everything is online. Um, however, we're trying to partner uh, with Earth Day to have a specific in-person announcement. Um, so we'll have more details about that uh, next week. Um, however, all the interactions with the judges are gonna be online in terms of reviewing um, the uh, projects. Um, it's really important um, as a judge, if you're not available during these two weeks, and we totally understand, that you tell us because it's very intense. There's a lot of projects to be judged and we wanna make sure that all projects get the judges full attention. Um, and it's totally defined to not be available at that time, but uh, we do need to know in advance so that we're not you know, sending you 10 emails a day asking you if you've <laughs> gone through the, um, the projects that you need to judge. So ideally, you would um, you know, put that into your calendar right now, that time. Uh, expected time would be about an hour and a half per project. And um, depending on how many projects actually finish, right now we're just, we have like about 300 people in the cohort. So um, you know, we don't know exactly how many of these projects will finish and how many judges we will need in the end. The judges have certain qualifications, including knowledge of uh, blockchain. So it's, um, you know, that's pretty specific. Um, so um, we estimated about um, 10 hours over the two weeks per judge. And this might scale up or down slightly, um, even if you are available just for a little less, or even if you are available for more, that would be great to know. Um, but please put that into your calendar now so that we don't have any surprises at the end. So we have more than 300 people. Is there a minimum amount of people per team? Like minimum max? It's about, it, we, we should it for four. Like if they, if they create a group right now between four and, and six, seven, usually there's some attrition throughout the process. Um, mm -hmm. So um, yeah, and then so in the about, end, we don't know how many people uh, finish. Okay, so that would be about 80 teams. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it ends up being much less, but um, yeah. Yeah, uh, same at 50, I would say. Yeah. And the thing is you have to judge various teams several times. So it's not like a judge is allo allocated three teams. He's the only one judging. No, we want at least two or three judges to rate the same team. Right. And then we reconcile everything uh, with the final you know, review with the judges. But um, it's important that each team has the opportunity to be reviewed several times. That's why you have such mm -hmm. a large number of, of um, teams to review. But it's really fun and it's really, um, you know, so it, it, it's, it, it's actually really interesting work. So you get a lot of so fun it, ideas. So um, Tessie, I'm, I'm sure you did similar before, but uh, in terms of the, that two week period, um, we should, I think, do two things just so that 300 people are not creating separate calendar invites. One, we can send out a calendar invite with a, you know, a, a, a free time allocated um, daily event for that two week period. And then we should also include in that calendar invite um, the schedule during those two weeks of, um, you know, what are the iterations that we have to do on these multiple um, judging sessions. Yeah, I'll, I'll send that out after this call. Once we have confirmed all the judges. Because we're still waiting to confirm some of the judges from the, um, the uh, sponsors. All right, any other questions on the judging criteria or any other general questions about the program? I have a quick question, um, and this is probably a, a post uh, question. So once there are uh, five successful 
projects and I know they're going to be allotted a certain amount of funds for that. I think there's three categories um, or three lots of 10,000. How do you, how are you guys, can you share the, the, the follow on effect? So how they actually get going after that? Cause $10,000 isn't very much for them to continue their, you know, to actually make some a, a change in in the in the world, so yeah. is there a follow on process where these organizations are funded, or yeah. is there so, something set up? So we're um, we're looking at that. Um, we're uh, we might leverage existing capabilities of of Tachyon, who have a very specific um, sort of mentorship um, process. Um, so there is there's two things. So as as we've said, um, most of the a lot of the teams that graduated from the incubator are fundraising right now. Um, Nori just closed a 1.5 million um, seed round, and so we want to put in a formal program for them uh, and the opportunity to be introduced to uh, investors. Um, so if anyone is interested in uh, contributing to that process, um, let us know, and we'll have a separate conversation on that. Uh, we want to, you know, gather as much feedback as possible before we we set up something. Um, the we the other thing is we're going to have enhanced um, sort of PR exposure about this. We have a PR firm who's going to come in as pro bono um, for us, and we'll also be able to, you know, sort of highlight participants um, of the hackathon uh, around that and just starting to raise awareness. And um, so these are our moving parts. I, I wish I could give you a, like a formal response. No, it's, all right. it, it's something we're working on. And, and York is, is Microsoft's, I know they have like an investment group and fund for startups. Are they, have, are they going to engage with this group? And you probably don't know the answer to that. So don't feel like you need to answer yeah, it. But let me let me just um, uh, be very clear that yes, Microsoft does have an investment arm called M12. Um, they are a completely independent investment arm, and as you can imagine, with a large enterprise, they invest in a very small number of highly strategic uh, investments. So, for example, GitHub, LinkedIn, those are the types of investments that are made, uh, you know, at at Microsoft on the on the large side. On the startup side, there are um, uh, a number of different startup um, and also scale up programs um, where these, uh, you know, the appropriate qualified uh, uh, types of organizations could be introduced uh, to those uh, to those programs and they have a qualification process. So uh, to the extent that teams have, you know, coming out of this have the right qualifications, then, you know, that's a perfect, um, uh, perfect venue for that. Um, there also is um, uh, one of the new sponsors coming on also has a follow on activity that we're going to be announcing as well. That's great. So I know that a lot of the sponsors, I mean, with the sustainability budget allocation for a lot of the Fortune 500, and, and obviously some of the sponsors that are coming on board, we probably need to um, create a feeder line to some of those organizations to say this is what's coming out of this and yeah. so take the opportunity to present these organizations and obviously they're going to have to fit the criteria of those fortune 500 organizations or those enterprises for their um, budget allocation or their criteria for their fund however it would be good to create a feeder so that these organizations don't just drop off the face of the earth. They actually can go into a feeder program that will distribute across all of our sponsors and maybe into other uh, organizations that have a sustainability budget for startups. Yeah, and the other thing I wanted to mention is, um, you know, each year we have a large, uh, a big conference that we organize either in DC or New York. This year we're thinking about, usually we do it in June right after blockchain week. But this, thing, this year we're thinking about doing it um, during UNGA week because we think that's a better fit in terms of attendees. And, you know, we can also always attract people who are interested in uh, on the blockchain side. But I think it's really, since we're really trying to bridge the gap between the sustainability, you know, sort of impact 
world and technology world, we think that um, that time would be better and actually would be an opportunity to showcase the, um, the winners. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I think it, when the blockchain week, it's, it's really, it just gets washed away. Exactly. But I think the, the UN week, I think that would probably be a lot, you know, there's also people in, you know, that are engaging or in town in New York that, you know, we could obviously set up interviews or meetings or something like that. So these organizations can evaluate the technology and those, the startup organizations are, you know, completed their funding or are going into their funding. And so it, it really would help to continue yeah. the work that's done from, from this hackathon. Yeah. Thanks Kelly for pointing that out. Any other questions at this stage? No, I don't see anything in the chat. Um, any other comments from our organizing organizers or former mentors that you would want to share? Uh, so anyone, um, there is a mentors channel. Um, we'll actually create a judges specific channel. They are private channels, so we have to send an invite to the the list of people. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I have to add it in the in the document because I didn't put the link of the mentors channel. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we've recorded this um, this session, so we'll also be sharing it with everyone. And um, we are still bringing on mentors until you know beginning of next week when we allocate teams. So if you know anyone else who's interested and wants to. Um, sort of uh, also participate, let us know, uh, and they can sign up with the uh, submission sheet and we'll happily in, in, involve them in this process. Excellent. Thank you guys. Thanks, Vanessa and, and Thank Tess, you. your team, Sophie, you guys did a great job. This is a lot of great information as well. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, Melissa. Bye. Thank you. Bye.